So I was born in Melbourne in 1955. My parents were migrants from France, actually. So my parents were, were brought to Australia by very close friends, an old school friend of my father from Vuch. And they were amongst, I think, some 30,000 Jewish migrants that came to Australia after the war. And the community is an interesting community because amongst us, it is the second highest community per capita of Holocaust survivors. So my milieu and the people that I grew up with were all children of survivors. My parents' best friends were survivors. And we accepted that as a norm. So the healthy part of that is that nobody questioned the fact that there was a Holocaust and that our parents went through trauma. So it was an understanding. So in a way, while I can see that that's a dysfunction and a trauma, it's also, it's validating. So nobody will question this at any point in your life because we there was enough of us um, I think the the community is an ex astonishing one and it's a very supportive community so it's all good yeah. um, in that they brought up their children together they had no families so they became friends became family and had very close relationships with one another and my parents children my, and my parents' friends' children became like my cousins and my sisters and my friends, and with whom I'm still very close. So we may have gone in different directions in our lives, but we're involved in very interesting endeavours. And both of those family mem both of those women are actually also descendants from Vuj. So that's an interesting, just as it happens, an interesting aside. Amongst the other friends that I have in my milieu were... Zdrinska Volans, <laughs> which is complete coincidence. So we all went to school together. We chose friends amongst a big group of friends. And it happens that a small group of my friends also come from Zdrinska Vola and also came from Vuj. So you can make of that what you will, but it's an interesting truth. Uh, the life was very preoccupied with making a living, making a future for children after the war and making sure that we all got a good education. And we were given the role of trying to make up for the loss, really. So the loss amongst us was huge. Uh, discussion about Holocaust was never, but always, and always present. So it didn't matter what the subject was, within minutes the conversation would always turn to the Holocaust. And with good reason, because who else would see the world in the same way as another survivor? That was also part of our lives. Um, a lot of energy went to making things very good for, for the children and making sure that we had a good life and creating a whole new world and creating a scaffold, so an infrastructure that was lost. So all of our families came with nothing in their pockets and had to make something when they arrived. And they made sure that we, were, we had underpinning, we had foundation on which to build. And that was, you know, if you're a Jewish community and you set up a school, you set up a, a Landsmannschaft, you set up uh, a hospital, you make sure that everything that's necessary for a community or kihila is organised. And, and Melbourne did that very, very well. And I think that we can see that very clearly. My mother's now 97, she'll be 98 in two weeks. And I'm not in Melbourne, I live in Sydney. But my friends, my mother's friends, children, the nursing home she's in, are all holding my mother. So she's supported by a broad range of people for, and how many years was she in Australia? They arrived in 1951, so nearly 60, 60 or something years of supporting each other. So what happened, how do I speak any Polish? So I was born in Melbourne. All of the family secrets were told in Polish over my head. Survival, <laughs> I learned how to speak Polish. So I'm one, and also I was an only child, so I think language is important and I mean all of my mother's si siblings speak language as well they speak probably seven languages each all of them my mother spoke speaks French English um, Yiddish a little bit Jewish Yiddish Polish and she speaks less than the rest my uncle like Mumek who could recite the Humash from the age of three from beginning to end so he was also 
gifted and talented, could speak. <laughs> His wife was Romanian, so he spoke Romanian, English, Hebrew, Spanish, because they lived in Spanish Harlem after the war, uh, Hungarian. Did I say Hebrew? He spoke, you know, like seven. Most of them spoke many languages. But I think most people in Poland spoke many languages. The borders changed, people knew. And German, of course. So they managed German because of the Yiddish, probably, initially, and then learnt the language. I just felt Jewish. Did I feel Polish Jew? Uh, yeah, we were all Polish Jews because we know the difference. But <laughs> Interestingly, Melbourne was where the Polish Jews went and Sydney was where the Hungarian Jews went and they don't actually get on that well. So there are quite a few Polish Jews in Sydney and there are quite a few Hungarian Jews in Melbourne, but the majority after the war were Polish and Hungarian in separate domains. And then you had a pre-war migration of German Jews who still managed to get it if they had some money, could come before 1939, sometime between 37 and 39, and came with their families quite intact if they had enough money and they could do it. And they did. And there was some Polish migration in 1920s from Bialystok. So there was an established Bialystok Landsmannschaft in Melbourne and they helped a lot. They helped to get a lot of the Jews out, but during the war they were not able to get people out, but after the war they did a lot to bring people.